Hi, this is Matt from Audio Plugin Deals. Today we're looking at Rhythmbox from Pitch Innovations. It's only just out now and it's a really cool little device. Let's take a look at it. So what is Rhythmbox then? Well, essentially it is designed for laptop producers, as you can see on the Pitch Innovations website. And what it does is it makes use of key commands or keys, I should say, on the keyboard to create triggers. So that's for individual sounds, or it's for patterns, it's for velocity up and down, it's for pitch up and down. There's a few other randomization op options in there as well. And as it says here, musical typing reimagined. It also features, as you can see here, a built-in sampler, which is really pretty cool. And then there's some expert presets here as well. So let's take a look at it in action. Let's close out of the website. And we'll look at it in action in Ableton Live. So in this project, I just have a 909, which is completely unnecessary for now. And then a little 303 coming from Ableton's analog. Again, ignore that for now. What we're focusing on at the moment is channel three, which is the rhythm box. So at most times when you open up the GUI, you're greeted with this little interface that says, click on this window to activate musical typing. Now, the reason I suspect that is, is because as I said in the intro, this makes use of key commands from the keyboard. And if it wasn't for this little activation option, then the door wouldn't know whether to apply those key commands to the plugin itself or to the door. So let's do what it tells us. Let's click on this window to activate musical typing. Now the way all Pitch Innovations devices are designed is really quite intelligent in that you don't need to do any complicated MIDI routing. Instead, you open up the instrument. I'm gonna call it an instrument for this purpose because then you can then select whichever sub instrument you want to load, if that makes sense. So for example, into Rhythmbox, I can load any one of these Arturia plugins or Sonic Charge or blah, blah, blah. And then once they're loaded in, then all the MIDI commands from Rhythmbox will apply to that instrument. It's a much cleaner way of doing it rather than routing MIDI in your door. But if you don't want to use an external instrument, you can use the inbuilt sampler. So here we have it currently set to Rhythmbox sampler. And if we click on here, there are a load of presets that we can use. So we have quite a few drum presets, quite a few percussion presets, some ethnic presets, some film, so like epic drums and stuff. We have some synth, a few little ones there. Then we have some shapes in the sixth option. Or we can click on this little drop down and, we can and then we can go to user presets or liked presets. Let's keep it on Hi-Hat's Trap as it currently is by default. Now you'll see these eight white boxes here. For anyone who's familiar with other Pitch Innovations products, you'll know that these are rhythm shapes. And the way they do it is really quite cool. So if we go to the shapes down here, you can see them all displayed here. And essentially the number of sides on the shape represents the note itself. So as you can see, one, two, three, four, etc. It's really quite an intelligent way of quickly identifying what's what. And as it says here, press numbers one through to eight for the key triggers. So when I press these one through to eight, you'll see on the bottom of my screen, a little notification coming up, just so you know which key I'm pressing. Now we're playing back pattern one, pattern two, three, and four, and so on and so forth. I can speed them up, so let's double the tempo and do the same again. Or we can halve it, etc. or without going anywhere near a MIDI keyboard, which is the whole point of this device. We can then change these patterns. So let's put the square onto both. And if I'm not mistaken, that should be 16th. Let's now put an eight on the end like so. So as you can see, it's so easy to quickly design a pattern. Let's now flick over to settings and we can see additional parameters for this. So we have velocity for each one of these steps. You notice this has four steps because we chose a four up here. If we select the second one, then we have eight steps and so on and so forth. So, so if I chose here and select this one, we have six. But let's go back to where we were on the eight and let's mute just ones at random like this. And we'll play back the pattern again. And now you can hear the pattern follows what we've just amended here. 
Or if that's not working for us, let's click on the little random dice. And now this is randomized for us. And it randomizes velocity and the mutes. Let's do the same for the first one. Let's do a randomization. Let's go back to the first one and let's make that a bit more busy. So let's get rid of these mutes like so. And we're going to speed up this or put it back to one again. And once again, I'm only holding down the keyboard button one while I'm doing this. If we go to the next option, we can choose, we can change the gate length. So let's increase the gate lengths on the second one. Let's do the same for the first shape. Obviously we're currently on a percussion patch, so this doesn't have all that much effect. So what we can do is I said right at the very start to ignore the 303 that I had loaded. Let's now make the most of that. Let's go over and we will accept MIDI from Rhythmbox like so. Let's change this to no sound because we don't want Rhythmbox to create any sound. We just want it to trigger the MIDI on the Ableton 303. Let's also make this second one a 16th, I think. Let's put it on like so. And now when I press one to repeat the pattern, we have the following. So that's sounding quite good, but we can do even more with that. We currently have, let's put these velocities up again, like so. Let's go to our note length one. Let's change this one. We can increase this. And we're even going to tie the third and the fourth together. Classic acid so far. Let's tie the second and third. We can maybe add a bit of swing by changing the note delays. Or below that we have the transpose function. I'm going to skip over for that though and I'm going to go to the trigger sequencer box here. Let's turn this on. Now the way this works is, you can see here, last played. So when I play back the pattern, it's always going to play back four times C2. But what we can do is on the third step, we can change that to be a D2, for example. Let's make the third one. Let's make it, oh, C sharp two. That sounds good. Now let's, let's do a D sharp two like so. Super cool. And once again, all without using a MIDI keyboard. Then below that we have some global sequencer settings so we can change the velocity. Or the gate length. Bit of swing. Obviously way too much to just put it just a touch. Or we can reduce the dynamics. Let's keep it as it was, 50%. I mentioned at the start of this section that the first note that it plays by default is last played. And where it gets that from is from the musical keyboard. So when I press these keys here, that's currently playing a C, C sharp, and I'm just playing on my QWERTY computer keyboard. So you might already have this in your, in your door. I think a lot of doors have this functionality natively built in, but it's really quite a neat solution to have it all self-contained in one single plugin. So now I'm pressing S, which corresponds to a D note. Now if I go back to settings, you can see we have D2 as being the last played. Or similarly, if I press W, that's a C sharp two, and then so on and so forth. As you can see, I'm pressing the notes on the keyboard and that's changing the last played note. And then from there, we can play the pattern back and this will all be straight 16ths on a G2. And then obviously with the ties that we included previously on these two steps. We can also change the octaves here. So you can see down the bottom here, if we press Z and X, we can go up and down the octaves, or we can change the velocity with C and V. So now it's only at 12. Going back to the pattern, that's quite low. And then we can increase it up to 127, should we wish. 
Over to the right, we have a few random options. So if I press B, that will randomize the trigger. As you can see here, we've changed shapes now. So if I play this back, I'm just pressing one again. Completely different pattern. Let's randomize it again with B. Again. Again. So let's say we like that. We can now do randomize the mute with M. Really quite cool. Let's say, however, the pattern isn't working for us and instead we want to record notes in manually. Let's turn on the MIDI record and we're going to record in some individual note. Let me do stop. And now we can drag this into the track itself. Like so. Really cool. Then moving on to the sampler. If we click on this, it gives a little warning, which I actually quite like. Do you wish to switch to the sampler? Because if you didn't have that, then you would lose any preset or whatever that you might have had loaded in terms of the in terms of the instrument that's loaded. So yes, let's turn on the sampler, and then we have the hi hats trap that we were agreed to at the start. Let's change this to something like African. Sounds interesting. Play back the patterns. Okay, I think that's working. You'll notice looking at the sampler, it is an eight part sampler. So each one of these parts has a different drum sound loaded into it. And you can see the trigger note down here. So if we were to press on the keyboard, that will trigger a different one of these sounds. Bongo. Who doesn't like some bongos? It's really quite cool. So it's somewhere in between a utility, a instrument and a MIDI effect or a sequencer really. And for the price that it's currently on offer at Audio Plugin Deals for, I think it's an absolute bargain. Even if you use just one feature of it, so the sequencer, the musical keyboard, or the sampler, any one of them is easily worth the price of admission alone. So go check it out. There's currently a demo on the Pitch Innovations website. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back shortly with something else. See you then. Bye.